Hello, and welcome to another episode of Healthy Perspectives. My name is Vernon Solomon. Dietitians and nutritionists have actively promoted the inclusion of probiotics and prebiotics as part of a healthy diet in the past decade. But what exactly are probiotics and prebiotics, and how important are they for our overall health? Even though they sound similar, the two play different roles in your health. In a nutshell, probiotics are beneficial bacteria, while prebiotics are food for these bacteria. In this episode, my co-host Linda Saka speaks with a young Dr. Rao to help us understand the key role these two bacteria play in maintaining overall health. Welcome to AUA Healthy Perspectives. I'm nurse and wellness coach Linda Saka and your host for today. Our topic is going to be the gut microbiome and we're very fortunate to have Dr. Rao Katapelli who is a second year medical student here but also a PhD in biotechnology and he's going to be our guest. I'm going to ask him to tell us a little bit more about his background because it's really very impressive. I'm Kameshwara Kotapali, and I'm a second year, a second semester medical student. And I have a PhD in biotechnology. And uh, I used to be a genome analyst and uh, sequence human genome and all of the genomes, microbial genomes. And I used to teach uh, next gen genomics uh, before joining AUA. And I understand you've written a number of publications. Yes, I did. And uh, in the last couple of years, I have published more than eight uh, papers and mostly on gut microbiome and their effects on uh, inflammatory bowel disease, health of the colon, and uh, relation between uh, gut microbiome and uh, pregnancy and health of the mother. And uh, I have also done some research on placental microbiome where we found like uh, different bacteria colonizing placenta. Mm -hmm. Usually we are of the opinion that uh, placenta is pretty mm -hmm. neat and uh, there is no microbes in the placenta. Mm -hmm. But we found that uh, there are microbes and uh, to our like surprise, we found around 150 different microbial mm -hmm. species in the, in the placenta of a pregnant wow. woman. So we're going to back up a little bit and our topic is the gut microbiome. So could you tell us what exactly are we talking about when we say that term? Yeah, when we talk about gut microbiome, it is the microorganisms in the environment of gut. Mm -hmm. And uh, their genome and their environment together is called the microbiome. What are some of the functions of our microbiome? They have, uh, we have more microbes than our human cells. So they have varied functions, including uh, uh, homeostasis and metabolizing various nutrients we take and uh, provide a healthy uh, body and, uh, and function. I had heard that um, one of the healthy functions that microbiome, the gut microbiome performs is that it helps us with our immunities against other things. Yes, uh, that's true. Uh, our immunity is mostly governed by our microbiome mm. and uh, some people are highly resistant to diseases mm -hmm. and all that because of their gut because microbiome. They have a very healthy gut healthy microbiome. Gut. Uh -huh. What are some of the things that could cause a problem with our gut to put it into bad shape? I understand you use the term dysbiosis. Yes, uh, that's a very interesting finding uh, that uh, if uh, the harmful bacteria takes over the control of the gut microbiome, gut environment, it becomes dysbiosis, mm -hmm. where they overcome the uh, beneficial microorganisms and they overtake them. 
so they colonize your gut instead of your beneficial ones so the person becomes sick mm -hmm. because of that and what would lead to that what what would what um be some of the causes of the imbalance in our gut yeah, it basically boils down to your uh, daily uh, life uh, our our diet would our, our diet, diet and, and uh -huh. our health, lifestyle basically uh -huh. so the food we eat we drink and uh, the uh, detergents we use they all determine oh. our microbiome so there was a recent study where they said like uh, if we use antimicrobials antibacterial soap that will destroy most of the harmful uh, beneficial microorganisms in the body uh -huh. so you have to avoid these uh, antimicrobial antibacterial soaps so it may not be a good thing to to use yes. an antibacterial soap yes that's right not for everybody anyway yeah what about i have heard antibiotics can cause trouble yes uh, that's a major concern in uh, old uh, old age homes and uh, the care like for the old people mm -hmm. where they are put to antibiotics and they are very susceptible to these harmful bacteria like the clostridium mm -hmm. and they take over the entire gut and it's hard to cure mm. so it's really dangerous when the person is taking antibiotics to control some uh, minor diseases if we are put on a course of antibiotics is there something we can do to help yes uh, i would suggest like after we take the antibiotics we should rebuild our gut by taking the routine things like the yogurt and uh, mm -hmm. uh, other supplements mm -hmm. that would be my next question what kind of things would help make our gut microbiome healthy yeah there are two ways to mm -hmm. uh, improve our gut health one is called prebiotic another one is probiotic so mm -hmm. i will define them briefly good that so, would help us because I, I hear the term often prebiotics and probiotics but i don't always know which is yeah, which. prebiotic is the food we take mm -hmm. which help the bacteria to grow and probiotic is the supplement of bacteria beneficial bacteria which we add to our gut mm -hmm. like we take yogurt it has a lactobacillus which is very beneficial to the uh -huh. gut so that's a probiotic mm -hmm. whereas prebiotic is like a celery green leafy vegetables or lettuce all this material including water mm -hmm. and rice like if you store rice in water and then eat it the next day that's a very good prebiotic oh. and helps the gut microbes to grow better so and it gives a very healthy uh, individual Dr. Rao, I had also heard recently that our gut microbiome can also affect our moods or depression or even dementia. Yes, that's right. Uh, the microbes in our gut, they generate metabolites which send signals to our brain and uh, that e eventually gives the mood and behavior. So our mood and behavior are affected by our gut microbiome so that's true and uh, at our uh, university we are thinking our team led by dr millis is of the opinion that there is a strong correlation between performance student performance and the gut microbiome and we are initiating a study on that one that's interesting what about sugar is sugar something that would be harmful to our microbiome yes uh, to some extent uh, there was a recent study where they say like the carbohydrates will affect your gut microbiome so they are going on low carb diets including sugar mm -hmm. to improve the health so, okay um, but what we should be encouraging are complex carbohydrates is that it yeah uh, more like a fiber and the carbohydrates which are complex like in the case of rice which is uh, having complex carbohydrates so if you take that kind of a starch uh, form of carbohydrate it will basically uh, improve the gut health and uh, it's a prebiotic it sounds like there's an exciting future in our studies about the gut microbiome do you want to speak about that a little bit 
Yeah, uh, there is an interesting uh, finding where they say like uh, in future, when you go to a doctor, they will do your microbiome, personalized microbiome. Mm. Means they will uh, do your genome analysis on the microbial genome of your gut and identify the bacteria which you have. And based on that, when they administer a drug, they will also administer a probiotic, a bacterial species which can metabolize your uh, in your gut, that drug. So that's the future. So it's a, not only personalized medicine, it's personalized microbiome wow. is the future. Well, I guess our takeaway today would be that it's very important to look after our gut health, that if it's not in good shape, it can lead to certain diseases. And do you want to tell us again what some of the diseases might be? Yeah, the most devastating one is the Clostridium mm -hmm. difficile, which causes colitis and inflammatory bowel disease, mm -hmm. which can lead to dehydration, kidney failure, perforation of the bowel, and ultimately to death. So it's a very serious very problem serious. in the United yes. States and uh, in so many other countries, it's not even reported. Mm -hmm. So care should be taken to avoid these kind of infections. And if there is an infection, there are options like fecal microbial transplant, where the healthy individual's fecal matter is mm -hmm. transplanted yeah. into a sick patient, and then it improves the gut health. Okay. And it is widely being practiced all across the world, and especially in uh, John Hopkins Medical mm -hmm. Center, where they use fecal microbial transplant to treat C. diff. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Treat. So again, as we wrap up, what would be some of the good things we can do for our microbiome? Yeah, my suggestion would be to eat healthy mm -hmm. and eat less. And combine this with daily exercise and avoid drinks like including the carbonated drinks, sodas and all mm -hmm. that. So that would be my recommendation. So bottom line, eat healthy, drink healthy. Yes, that's right. All right. Thank you, Dr. Rao, very much. This has been AUA Healthy Perspectives. Our topic today was the gut microbiome with Dr. Rao Gotapelli. Yes. Thank you. Asthma is a fatal disease with serious consequences, especially during an asthma attack. Knowing what to do in this situation can be crucial to saving your life. First, when having an asthma attack, stay calm and take deep breaths while standing straight up. Second, take your reliever or rescue inhaler immediately and take one or two puffs. Continue to breathe steadily. Third, sit down and ensure any tight clothing is loosened. However, do not lie down. If there is not immediate improvement, take another one or two puffs of your reliever or rescue inhaler. If your symptoms do not improve in a few minutes, call emergency services or go to your nearest hospital. Do not wait until it's too late. Control your asthma. Do not let it control you. This message was brought to you by American University of Antigua College of Medicine Asthma League. So as we conclude this episode, here are a few points to bear in mind. Probiotics are in foods such as yogurt, aged cheese, pickles, and miso. Prebiotics are in foods such as whole grains, bananas, greens, onions, garlic, soybeans, and artichokes. In addition, probiotics and prebiotics are also available as dietary supplements. Most likely, you are already including some or all of these in your diet, and they're doing their job of maintaining your overall gut health as well as your overall health. If not, do try to incorporate some of these good bacteria into your diet as much as possible. Take care of yourselves. We thank you for spending some time with us and for allowing us to share healthy perspectives with you. Be well, Antigua and Barbuda, and may your perspective always be a healthy one.